Hello everybody. Listen, today I'm not alone here. As you can see, there is a second chair standing and we have a special guest who has uh, visited our offices and showed us something special. Please show yourself, special guest. Oh, I like the dramatic entrance. I like the dramatic entrance. Hello, welcome Hello. Arthur. Nice Hi. to see you. And thank you for this t-shirt. Listen, it's a good um, deal. I gave him a t-shirt, he gave me new lenses. Deal done. That's how we do business in Czech Republic, okay? So, Arthur, it's double Arthur today. So, uh, you are Arthur with H, I'm Arthur without H. So, that's the difference uh, for those who don't know. Welcome, thank you for coming. It's a pleasure to, to have you with us. Thank you for inviting me to your studio. Great oh, studio. Oh, it's my beautiful studio mm -hmm. here. My office studio. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, so today you brought us um, and showed us new lenses, prototypes, um, or I would say even the stereo setup prototypes, not only lenses, but already a full VR view, stereoscopic. And uh, last time when I showed to, to our viewers um, some of the sneak peeks of the previous lenses, um, so today we had several setups. Um, one was 140 degrees vertical FOE with 120, uh, sorry, 140 horizontal, 120 yeah. vertical. The next one was 160 horizontal and 120 vertical. And another one was 180 and 120 vertical. I know some people are fading out already and uh, collapsing, but that's true. I saw it with my own eyes and we'll, we'll put some footage here uh, while you're watching. So uh, we'll show you what, what we've seen. Tell us um, what, how was it to, to prepare those prototypes? I know it's always a challenge, but uh, tell us a little bit more about them and then I can give you my impressions of mm -hmm. what I've seen and what we prepare. Ah, so one year ago we demonstrated uh, our uh, pancake lenses, uh, first revision of pancake lenses that were with uh, displays of 2.1 inch, so uh, those fast LCDs of this size were limiting field of view, mm -hmm. but uh, we had a special architecture with four displays instead of two displays, so we get 240 degrees field of view last year. But then uh, uh, this year we demonstrated uh, our second revision of pancake lenses uh, working with bigger displays, 2.56 inch. So with, the, with those bigger displays we can reach tremendous field of view of up to 130 degrees vertically and horizontally we can play with field of view because we don't have to push nasal field of view same as temporal. We always uh, put more temporal field of view on behalf of nasal, so we can configure our setup up to 180 degrees over 120 or even 130. If we rotate those big displays by 45 degrees, we can even reach 130 degrees. Okay, so for those, uh, oh, the camera decided to cut you off. Uh, but uh, what, I, what I want to say, for those who don't know, Arthur is the CEO of Hypervision, and you guys are, can I call you an R&D company, uh, which does uh, deep... Um better than mm. optics. Uh, so you are, you are specializing on, on optics and visual engines for uh, XR headsets. Uh, I don't want to call it just VR, but it's also mixed reality headsets. Mm -hmm. And when you say configure, that means that there, there, there are, your, your lenses are next generation pancake lenses. I can truly say that because this is something which doesn't exist today uh, in terms of field of view, clarity, uh, non-distorted image and other uh, specifications. So you say you can set up things, you know, you're licensing your technology to different companies. Um, we are one of your customers at Somnium Space. We will discuss probably a bit later the Somnium VR2 and, and things we're preparing for, for that, which is years away, but still. And you are, you know, every company has different uh, needs. Right, someone mm -hmm. wants to have 120 degrees, 
by 120 degrees because that's their business. Someone wants to push and max out, fill the view, 180, maybe more, whatever, and someone want to be in, and wants to be in between. And that's what you guys provide because it's not just you know doing some small adjustments and you're ready. It's a lot of research and development. Um, could you describe a little bit of what you have shown us today in terms of the physical specifications of the lenses. Um, you don't need to go into details, of course, but uh, what you can say, uh, size, and again, we'll put some images here. So, you know, the field of view is the matter of uh, geometry. Uh, so it depends uh, how close the lenses are to the eyes, what the diameter of the lenses, what the shape of the lenses, are they convex, concave, flat? Uh, so, different uh, uh, partners have different needs. Some partners are asking for more field of view and others for bigger eye relief. And uh, there is another type of partners that are doing mixed reality, like Lynx, that uh, don't care about uh, too big field of view, but care about a uh, smooth transition between real life in peripheral vision to virtual image uh, through virtual reality with path through. So the, everyone have, has different needs. So our technology is uh, customized, uh, could be customized according to the needs of the partners. So we can uh, make uh, eye relief of 10 millimeters for the biggest field of view or 15 millimeters for those that need maximum comfort or 13 millimeters in between and everyone need the uh, own ergonomic cut of, of our lenses. Uh, um, for mixed reality, for instance, ergonomic cut is in the way not to obscure, not to obstruct the peripheral vision. And for, for the case of uh, simulators, when maximum field of view is needed with stimulation of peripheral vision for situational awareness, we configure our setup with our lenses for up to 180 degrees horizontal field of view. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, but basically our lenses uh, are supporting up to 140 degrees monocular, 140 degrees uh, diagonally, vertically, horizontally, because they're uh, round lenses. Um, yes, and uh, one more thing. Uh, why we, our len pancake lenses are different from any other lenses that exist on the market? Because we are not limiting in our design to standard manufacturing constraints. And standard manufacturing constraints are based uh, for pancake lenses are based on polarization thin films that could be uh, integrated over flat surfaces. The only player that did it not for flat surfaces is Apple Vision Pro. They have, uh, they're using special patent to embed the quarter wave plate, it's a very important part in uh, pancake lenses, uh, between cylindric surfaces. Uh, and we have. Uh, we discussed this. Color, I'll link um, this video in, uh, in the description here. But um, mm -hmm. I just want to say that um, you mentioned links, and obviously, those who follow this channel or Somnium or Hypervision, they know that we work together. Uh, three companies also invested in, in Hypervision it was Virginia, Somnium Space, and, um, and Lynx. And um, it's not a secret that. While we have, <clears throat> I would say, we have basically for VR1, we have basically maximized and squeezed maximum out of aspheric lenses at this point of what could deliver in a, in a good field of view, undistorted field of view and stuff. The next step for us, obviously, and we believe uh, is pancake lenses um, and, and, and um, with greater visual fidelity and field, and field of view, of course. So we work together with Hypervision on that. Um, and it takes years to develop something from, from, you know, like many people believe that, yeah, you just put pancake lens, you just put some screen in, you make high, hard field of view, you put some plastics on top and the headset is ready. Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Uh, so it takes years to develop something from the prototype to actual uh, real real headset, which can be sold in masses and thousands of uh, or tens of thousands of units. So 
yeah, I mean, today we've tested you. You brought us the the latest the latest prototypes. I really liked what I what I've seen. We've discussed uh, pretty extensively of what are possibilities, what each company needs uh, for for their own need. I will not disclose what we are planning for for VR two in terms of technical specifications, but definitely some great stuff. Uh, better than hopefully that what VR one was uh, in many aspects. Mm. You also, I know, uh, I don't want to disclose the names, but you also work with uh, or talk to a lot of uh, other bigger companies who are interested in XR development and headsets and stuff. Mm. We know that the big field of view is not direct focus at the moment of many companies, but they're all looking, you know, the constraint of field of view is there. Everybody wants to have a further field of view and it just takes time to develop. So you're going now to China for a trip, right? Um, long trip, yes. Long trip. One, one month. One month. Um, so you'll be visiting a lot of different companies there. Um, put your guesses in the comments. Oh, now I'm lucky YouTuber. Put your guesses in the comments below. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, so you'll be meeting with companies. There's a lot of efforts right now uh, happening. And um, again, while we work with Hypervision, Somnium Space and Lynx and VR engineers, you're also, uh, you know, opening some partnerships and uh, doing some stuff with, uh, uh, with other companies. Now, I know a lot of people will remember and say, wait a second, I've seen these guys showing 240 degrees uh, prototypes on, on, on the conferences. What is what is with the two hundred forty degrees prototypes on the on the conferences? How do you how do you like where where does it stand today? Uh, what do you think about this? Because I mean I saw it, I loved it. Um, do you see where do you see the real application for this uh, for this lens? So two hundred forty degrees is a niche product uh, for uh, specific use cases that need stimulation of uh, peripheral vision from behind us uh, and uh, yes this technology is available um, now we found out that what we showed you today uh, while using two displays not four displays like in a vr 240 uh, is much simpler and cheaper to implement and still you can get get 180 degrees it's like that so for most of use cases 180 degrees will be enough for use cases of wide field of view and uh, think about uh, paintball virtual paintball you need to, to know what is happening around you think about uh, driving learning uh, motorcycle driving uh, scooter driving uh, what, what what is the real human field of view so we can sense a, a two, uh, we can sense 210 degrees like that, mm -hmm. but we also rotate our eyes mm -hmm. like that. So uh, we every day we use 270 degrees. Mm -hmm. So ideally, what for most use cases to provide 180 degrees could, could be enough, mm -hmm. good enough. And, and and another thing that is very important is vertical field of view. So with uh, these uh, new prototypes, we bring up to 130 degrees vertical it's fold. It's pretty good. So we can feel <coughs> totally immersed. And um, yeah, the big companies uh, will come to big field of view someday, but there is a lot of demand. And uh, yes, the, you're asking what happening with our technology. So we will demonstrate our technology in AWE in June in the United States. And uh, we do thinking to release uh, uh, some uh, developer edition. Probably it's, it's still not decided. But if it will be enough demand for our technology by developers that need wide field of view for specific use cases, we will consider to release developer edition of, of the, this technology that you see today, that Arthur is the first that saw this technology today. And uh, but it will be available for demonstration in June on AWE. Yeah, I think by the way, everyone who is interested in in licensing or working with with Hypervision on the on the lenses can contact them via website. Uh, they'll get back to them. Um, just I guess when you write to them, 
describe precisely what do you need from that so that they give, get more information. Uh, just don't, don't write, hi, I like your 240 degrees. That doesn't help. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've seen it. It's, it's pretty remarkable, especially the, the blending of four screens, how seamless it is, given that there's some stitches and things like that. Um, so that captivated me for sure. So it was uh, what you mean uh, long ago, 240 yeah, degrees? Yeah, yeah, 240 um, degrees. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but you obviously have some newer uh, things to show. Uh, yeah, I just also wanted to add that you say, uh, you know, from one thing is to make a prototype, but then another thing is to bring the lenses to mass production. Mm -hmm. There is a big gap and a long stretch of research and development in between mm -hmm. to make the lenses producible. Mm -hmm. I, I can confirm even for VR1. The double stack lenses we did, uh, I don't know where I have the lens here, but uh, the double stack lenses we did uh, where you put together the lenses to make them producible in a form factor we need it, in a quantity we need. It's a challenge and it takes time. It took quite a lot of time. So, you know, pancake lenses are, I would say, more complex uh, in production than, than uh, spheric lenses. So yeah, bring them and, uh, and and bring them from the prototypes to production can take a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, to make it right. So I can say, yeah, the production of pancake lens is about 10 times more complicated than production of aspheric lenses. Uh, and at this stage, we starting this production. We are working on injection molding and uh, also on precise manufacturing. The, the the pancake lens saving tolerance of of uh, tens of microns, while a spheric lenses have tolerances maybe hundreds of microns. So the, the the difference is huge here. So production is much more complicated. And those days we are starting yep. the process of uh, mass production of our lenses. So I guess by the end of this year we will be able to produce uh, small batches of ch much cheaper lenses because today we produce uh, very ex our production is very expensive it's done like masterpieces yeah, of course yeah yeah so yeah I listen I I will continue developing things we are planning to develop which we don't talk here about but um, it's a long journey definitely not not a cheap and not a quick journey but it's a long journey i can as as the vr enthusiast right now i'm talking as vr enthusiast i hope more companies will adapt to this technology because the visuals are great and the possibilities are great and while i understand why some companies are it's hard to break this 110 100 degrees field of view it's physics but I hope the companies, big companies and smaller companies will invest more into high field of view VR headsets and MR headsets because that's what I want as VR enthusiast. Mm -hmm. I, you know, the more field of view, the better. It's always like this. Um, so we will support you, continue supporting you, continue working with you. I wish you all the best in, the, um, in your trip in China. Uh, send us some pictures. And uh, yeah, do you have anything to do? You want to add anything to add? I will have a lot of what to add, but we have uh, time for. Oh, wait another. a second! One second! One second! He also tested the latest version of oh. VR One today. How? I forgot. Tell How? us. Yeah. Okay. How by the way, follow? yes, I'm investor in VR in, <laughs> in Hypervision, but he's a stubborn guy. He will tell you the truth. Okay. So, uh, what do you think? How did you like it? So today I had a pleasure to test Somnium VR1. Uh, I can say that it's the best visuals that I ever saw through all headsets. Um, so it says above 30 PPD and quite big eye box. Mm, the ergonomics of the headset is quite good. It's comfortable sitting on the head. So it could be pleasure to use Somnium VR1 and uh, I hope uh, thousands of people that VR fans will use your Somnium VR1 and will have a uh, pleasure to use it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, we, we, we've, uh, he tried Beat Saber uh, in, 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 in it uh, and, and of course some other parts, but uh, what, what, did you, what did you like about the, the visuals the most? What was 
What was for you when you took it on? What was the best part of the visuals? So uh, you feel close to reality in uh, Somnium VR1. The colors are uh, very good, uh, and uh, the this above 30 PPD is also uh, everything is very sharp. And the big eye box, I tried different uh, interpapillary distances, and it uh, didn't. Uh, almost didn't influence the sweet spot uh, the, the sweet spot so this is a big eye box the meaning that you you can uh, play a bit saber and uh, a little shaking of the headset wouldn't mm. influence uh, the visual quality okay. um, yeah I mean, but, ah, by the way field of view is uh, the biggest uh, among all commercial headsets available it's it, it bigger it's kind of standard 30 degrees or 100, uh, sorry, 130 or 115, 120, something like that. No, 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 I think so. Maybe you felt like this. So we uh, we have, I think, vertically 105 uh -huh. and uh, horizontally, I think I was rendering for you 125 in the beginning, mm -hmm. then I increased it for you to 140. Mm -hmm. The question, we didn't measure how, how much he see, because I can see up to 136. You've probably seen maybe I don't know, so definitely somewhere about 130. So it's a lot. It's a but lot. Qualitatively, uh, uh, not quantitatively, but qualitatively, it's. I felt that it's the biggest field of view that I ever tried in commercial headset. I would say I, undistorted field of view. And uh, yes, in undistorted. I'm not talking about uh, early Pimax or Xtal. Uh, but uh, all the rest of the headsets, so you have the biggest field of view with great visual fidelity. So I think this headset could have a very big success. Thank you. Uh, for me, when you say when you said that, um, and I know you told me before that you really liked it, uh, it means a lot because you are dealing with visuals. So he's picky, okay? He he doesn't like something. He shows you immediately. He tells that, but. Yeah, I think at this point where with latest warping and uh, all the latest changes we're doing, I, I feel that we are there. And, I, and, and you know, the big advantage is that you are not using pancake lenses there, so you don't have those ghost of pancake lenses. No glare, no ghosting. No yeah. Yeah. So the optical guys that designed that uh, did a really good work, uh, take it uh, because of double yeah, lenses, stack, yeah, they took it to the boundary of possibilities of optical design. I agree. I, I, and how, I don't know what iteration we are at right now because I already lost count. But it took us a lot of iterations, mathematically wise, physically wise, to reiterate the lenses, re remake the the moldings, and I don't even want to tell you how much money it was, but uh, he knows. Uh, but it, it's 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 a long, tedious, expensive process, and I'm happy with the result. I'm really happy with the result. So thank you for testing it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you also tried uh, more extensively Vision Pro today. Uh, mm -hmm. Some things you loved a lot, some things you liked less. Uh, do you want to say something about Vision Pro? What do you think about it? Yeah, the, the pass-through uh, somehow is not so sharp, it's foggy, the pass-through, but uh, panoramic uh, footages or videos, yeah, footages are great. Uh, I was feeling like in real, in reality with uh, Vision Pro. And the VR scenes, the uh, mountains and mountains stuff. Mountains yeah, and, great. and soccer. Oh yeah, the, the 3D immersive uh, trailer. Yes, it's almost reality. I think it's almost there. Next version of Apple could be r real reality. But field of view is very small. You couldn't be immersed like in life with uh, such field of view. Yeah, you're still looking through very clear but still window uh, mm, yes. or glasses into, into the reality. But Tunnel vision. A little bit of tunnel vision, yeah. I think for their use case, because they're not trying to be gaming headset, they're trying to be productive headset, mm -hmm. I think they did a great job. Um, but next generation would be better, hopefully they will increase. But physics is still physics. The lenses and the screen size, we are discussing, we were discussing it today. 
they'll have a lot of work to do, a lot of R&D. Maybe, hey, Apple, call uh, Archer, they can help. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of physics and a lot of things to solve. How to squeeze more FOV, the same image uh, size and screen size and not have artifacts. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of work. All right, so that's it for today, everybody. If you have any questions, uh, put them below actually, and I'll either Arthur himself or I will ask him and he will reply or I will reply there. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll see each other in the next video. We'll probably know more when you come back from China. In meanwhile, thank you for coming, it was a thank pleasure. You. And everybody, bye-bye, see you next time. <laughs>